Hello, and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Miriam Pierre Louis, your host, broadcasting to you live from Eastern Massachusetts. Today we have Uri Gonen, who is with us live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, for his class organizing and tagging photos with the My Heritage mobile app. Thanks to Uri, and thanks to nearly 900 of you for registering for today's live webinar. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. And now to introduce our speaker, Uri Gunen. Uri has been working at MyHeritage since 2005. He was the original developer behind the Family Tree Builder. He is Senior Vice President of Product Management at MyHeritage. He has been involved with Pedigree Map, Pedigree View, Tree Consistency Checker, and integrations with Family Search. Before joining MyHeritage, Uri worked in other software startups in Israel, the United States, and Canada. Please put your virtual hands together and let's give Uri Gonen a nice warm webinar. Welcome. Uri, how are you? Welcome to the webinar. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for the uh, introduction. Yes. And let's move on. Okay, so as Marian mentioned, I'm uh, Uri Gonen. I, I've been working my heritage for a long time. I gave quite a lot of webinars already um, with Jeff and now for the first time with Marianne. Today, I'm going to talk about um, organizing and especially tagging your photos with the MyHeritage mobile app. Now, specifically, I'm going to talk about uh, a new feature that we just launched called the Photo Tagger, which is available at this point on our mobile app, both for Android and now starting also on iPhone and soon also on the website for use uh, in the next uh, month or so, it'll be available there too. So let's begin. Uh, a brief overview of what is the photo tagger. It's a new free feature that allows you to tag multiple photos of the same person in one go. So now, if you have a lot of photos on my heritage of your family, and we obviously encourage you to do so, it'll now be really a quick and easy and fun process to tag them, meaning specifying who is in the photos and where in the photos, and that will enrich your family tree immensely. It lets you efficiently organize your family photos and saves you the time that would otherwise take you to do this manually by going into each photo individually. We're adding this as another tool in MyHeritage that allows you to make your family history more enjoyable. So download the new MyHeritage mobile app, or if you already have it, upgrade it to the latest version and enjoy Photo Tagger. As I mentioned, if you're an Android user, this has been available for a few weeks now. We're starting now to roll it out to the iPhone users, if, you're, if you have an iPhone. And in the next several weeks, also, it will be available on the website as well. Um, why should you bother tagging your photos? So you can see here a family tree without photos tagged and one with and see the difference. Um, tagging lets you easily locate individuals by their face uh, and it makes your family tree and your experience on MyHeritage a lot more enjoyable and a lot more personal. So building a family tree, uploading photos of these people and then tagging them makes uh, life and research a lot more enjoyable for genealogy. So we're going to show you the photo tagger in a sec, but just kind of behind the scene, what does the photo tagger do? What's the magic behind this new feature? So photo tagger, it uses facial recognition technology in order to first identify faces in your family photos. Um, and then it's, it will scan your photos that you have uploaded to MyHeritage and then groups those faces that it identifies together into groups of similar faces that it believes to be of the same person. 
Uh, and then it will also give you suggestions of who those faces are based on previous photos that you have already tagged, either manually or through the photo tagger itself. Um, we found that it does a very good job at identifying faces of the same person throughout their life, childhood and adulthood, different camera angles, frontal and from the side, and different appearances that they might have. Wearing a hat, different facial hair, and so on. It does a very good job in identifying that this is indeed the same person. Uh, it creates these suggestions and then it gives it to you in order to confirm because it's never 100% perfect. It never actually tags those photos for you. It rather gives you suggestions that you can then accept or modify if you think it did uh, some mistakes here and there. So let's begin uh, the process of actually working on the MyHeritage app and going to Photo Tagger and tagging and, and confirming the suggestions that it made. So here I am in the, in this case, the Android uh, mobile app, but it's pretty much the same on the iOS. Uh, minor changes of the application based on the different platforms. So when I open the MyHeritage app, there is the home screen, which has different sections of the app, and photos is the one you want to go to. Um, a, a note about whether or not the feature will be available to you. Um, so if you have a very small tree of uh, no more than less than 20 people, and if you only have less than 10 photos, then you won't see the photo tagger. It waits for you to have a large enough tree, not that large as you can see, and a few photos to work with. Otherwise, it really doesn't have any value. So when you click on photos, you will get to the photo section, which is something that we already have for a while. And now what you will see here at the top of your photos is a banner saying hey we have this new feature called photo tagger come and check it out so click start in order to begin the process another way to access it is directly from the main menu of the app uh, and you can get to all the features of the app from there and in the photo section of the menu there is a new link called photo tagger tap it and you get to the same place Okay, so we clicked on start, but first things first, we ask you to accept the conditions and, and understand the privacy issues. And uh, once you're okay with that, then click the allow button and the process will begin. We'll kind of go over all these issues uh, as we get along in understanding how it works. And I'll kind of go back to that throughout the next slide. So you need to scroll down all the way. You need to click the chip, I explicitly give consent and then allow. So as you can see, we never really go and scan your photos and do all this magic unless you specifically asked us to. So nothing is happening without your knowledge. Very important. Okay, so once you do that, the process begins. Uh, photo tagger. In fact, it's not on your app. It's done on our servers. Um, a request is made for your photos to be scanned and uh, calculating those suggestions of uh, people in your photos and who they are. Now, this can take uh, a bit more time if you have a lot of photos. It really depends on how many photos you have. It can take a few seconds, it can take a few minutes. Uh, in any case, you will receive also an email from MyHeritage telling you that your photo suggestions are ready. Or you can stay in the app and wait. And once uh, the, uh, those suggestions are calculated, they will be presented to you. So while we're waiting here, I just want to make a little bit of a note on about privacy. As I mentioned, our servers take your photos and um, calculate those suggestions. 
those suggestions are stored on my heritage temporarily only for the app to display and let you uh, work with them but if you do not uh, work with the photo tagger for three months you don't go in and work there then we will send you an email saying we're going to remove them just so that we don't keep all this information that you're not really interested in so no a chance that all this thing will stay there and without your knowledge. So this is important as well. If you want to go back after we have deleted those suggestions, you will need to again uh, start. We will go through this process again, scan your photos and give you those tagging suggestions. Okay, so by now, uh, the process should have been completed if I have a, a good amount of photos. And so next time I go to the photo section, you see that this photo tagger banner doesn't say start anymore. It tells you that you have suggestions. Go ahead and go over them and accept them. And this is finally, we're getting into the meat of things here. So let's go on. So we are clicking on the banner and we will see here those suggestions organized by what we call group. So a group is a bunch of faces from your photos that we think, or the algorithm photo tagger believes are of the same person. And you can see a list of those here. In this example, there are only 12. It's not a big photo set, but if you have a good amount of photos with lots of people there, you might have hundreds of them. Um, so we, you, we actually group them into there are two types of groups, as you can see here. There is what we call identified groups. And the first example here on the list is what we call an identified group. So not only do we know that all these faces are of the same person, we can also give a suggestion of who this person is. And how we do that is by, if we see that some of those faces were already tagged, by you or anybody that you invited to your site as Andrew William Smith is in this example, then we can assume that all the other faces in this group are also of the same person. And now to make a note here about privacy, we only give you those suggestions if this person is deceased. We never really want to get into the slippery slope of creating biometric information about living people and understanding their faces and giving you suggestion that, let's say this is your brother who is alive. And so we don't get into that. Uh, if that is the case, we mark this group as unidentified and you will have to identify by yourself. Again, a privacy issue that we want to really abide by all the privacy rules of today's environment. So identified groups, we know who it is and it's deceased. An unidentified group, it's either we don't know who it is because we have no other photos where this person is already tagged, or this person might be a living person, so we don't uh, store that information in our, in our database. So these are the two types of groups. You can see all of them, or you can just focus on identified or unidentified by clicking or tapping those filters on the top. Okay, so we explained what groups are. We explained what identified and unidentified are and the privacy issues really pertaining to that. So let's go and click on the first one, a group of, in this case, 14 faces that we believe are of Andrew, your grandfather in this case. So we tap here. And we go into this identified group. So at the top, we see who we think this person is. And below, we will show you those 14 faces in the list that we see here. And in the list, each item is actually composed of two parts. On the left, you will see the face that we identified. And on the right is the entire photo where that face was taken from. So you can see here, the white 
uh, square here is where that face was found and so on. So this lets you see both those, the face, and in this case of Andrew, and also the entire photo where we found this face. Each one is, has a orange checkbox, which means that we think that this is the, in fact this person. If you click confirm, it will uh, go ahead and tag Andrew in all those 14 photos as per the suggestion. Now, some of them might be incorrect. So you can go and uncheck each one of them by clicking the face, and that'll change the state of the checkbox to uncheck. And then you can confirm all but the ones that you have marked as a mistake. So if his brother looks a little bit like him, or his son looks a little bit like him, and one of them is the brother or the son, you can remove those and tag only the correct one. Once you remove photos and confirm, those photos will be potentially resuggested as somebody else or resuggested as a person that you don't necessarily know who it is. So that once you interact with it, the photo tagger takes all this into account and recreates new and improved suggestions. You can also just reject this group in case that the entire group is a mistake, the entire group is wrong. Maybe there are too many people in it and it's not a coherent group. So you can just get rid of it, let the photo tagger reassess the information in the, in the future. So as you can see here, most of the time, everything is correct. As we look at many, many examples, you just confirm and here you tag 14 photos of Andrew in one shot. You can see how um, efficient, and enjoyable and fun this whole process is. A lot more than going into each photo, marking the person in it in the right place, entering their name, a lot of tedious. And we know that if you have hundreds or even thousands of photos on MyHeritage, it becomes very tedious to go and tag them if you don't have this amazing tool. Um, on the right, we saw that this the, the full picture here. Um, you can click it and then go and see the entire photo. <clears throat> you can see here more information about this photo, their title, date, place, and if other people are already tagged in this photo, you will see them, their names, and this can help you decide whether this is in fact the person we're talking about. Uh, seeing that you know their wife and their daughter is there that makes sense that that's in fact him so this is very helpful and then from here you can also swipe and get to the next photo in the group if you can if you want to work with that each photo individually you can also do that so this was a group of photos that we understood belonged to the same person and we also had a suggestion because there is prior knowledge of existing photos that you already tagged with that person. This is an example here of an unidentified group. So we have photos that we think are of the same person, but we don't know who it is. So this is very similar. And the only difference really is that at the top, we don't have a suggestion. And then instead, we ask you to supply the, the person. So you go into this search by name, you start typing their name, and you will get here a list of suggestion of people that have this name, first name or last name, and you select the right person. And from there, it's the same. You can uncheck some of them if they are not correct, you can confirm, or you can reject. And usually you won't even give a name here, you'll just reject. And that happens when this is not a person in the family, you might have them to be a bystander in photos, but more likely a family friend or somebody in your photos who is not really part of the family that you want to document. If it is a person that is in your family and you cannot find them in the search because they're still not in the tree, this is a good uh, opportunity to go to your family tree, add them in the right place, come back here and then type their name and they will be there and you can then tag 
this person in all the photos that you have uploaded to my heritage before. So similar process, uh, except for supplying the actual person as the suggest because we don't have a suggestion. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about privacy um, because it's very important to us. So all this information of those photos and who are who is in the photos that we have calculated for you is something that we never share with anyone but you. Never to give, we never give it to third parties. We never sell it. Obviously, my heritage is very strict about all that. And as we mentioned, uh, suggestion identification of people in photos is only done to deceased individuals and yourself. If you have photos of yourself, you will also be able to use photo tiger for them. And as we saw before using the feature, you're uh, given a consent form and you uh, fill that. And you can also always withdraw it by going to the settings and saying, I'm not interested in this anymore. So privacy is very important. We put it at the top of our um, priority. So to summarize, what are we seeing here? Uh, Photo Tagger is available to all my heritage users. You don't need a subscription plan of any sort in order to use it. So if you have photos on my heritage, regardless of your uh, subscribed users, a paying user or not, you can use Photo Tagger. This is great. Uh, as I mentioned, currently it's available for the Android and iOS. iOS we're rolling out this week. By the end of the week, it will be available for all users. <clears throat> and soon also on the website. So by the end of this summer, it will be available. Um, we suggest that you systematically go and confirm all those tagging suggestions in order to get the full benefit of the photo tagger and use it to quickly and easily uh, tag people in your photos on MyHeritage. You can go into the app. And they, they are sorted by the number of photos. So the, the ones at the top will be the people that are more often appear in your photos. So you can start with them. As you go down the list, it's people who have, appear in less and less photos. And whenever you upload more photos, then Photo Tagger will automatically scan them and add them to existing groups or create new groups or reorganize the groups. And of course, if you have enabled the photo feature, the Photo Tagger feature, it will start doing that whenever new photos are uploaded to MyHeritage by you or anyone who you have invited to your family site. So to conclude, uh, tagging historical photos can transform the family tree into a masterpiece. Like we saw before, it's not just a bunch of cards, it's a bunch of cards with photos. And when you go into a person, you can see all their photos and it helps a lot with your research. Um, documenting who these people are also by photos is very important. And we hope you enjoy the photo tagger and manage your photos with it in order to preserve your family history. Um, just to mention that Photo Tagger is just one of the uh, rich tool sets that we have in order to let you preserve your family history with photos, including other features that we have released in the last few years, including the photo colorization feature, which lets you take old black and white photos and see how they would have looked in color. We also have a lot of photo enhancement features in color and photo restoration for damaged photos. So we're working a lot on photos and now with Photo Tagger. And if you remember Deep Nostalgia, which allows you to take a photo and animate it and make the person move and see how they would have looked uh, <clears throat> when they were alive and Deep Story, which takes photos and makes a whole story with them about the person's life. So together with all the existing amazing tools that we have on MyHeritage to enrich your family history through photos, now with Photo Tagger, it makes it so much easier to work with photos. And stay tuned for 
more amazing features that we are working on regarding photos and specifically with the app that will make it even more enjoyable, more uh, quicker and, and um, more efficient to work with your photos on MyHeritage. So stay tuned where we have more in the pipeline. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you come back to more webinars and definitely to our app to work with uh, your family tree and with especially with your family photos. Back to you. Uri, this looks great. A wonderful addition to the photo capabilities at MyHeritage. I do have a number of questions, but let me uh, take back the screen. I'll do some announcements and then I will uh, bring you back on for the Q&A. All right, we have uh, more MyHeritage series webinars coming up. So on August 9th, Mike Mansfield will be here with Danish research with online records at MyHeritage and beyond. Uh, it's always good. Mike takes us uh, in depth into the new um, records that are always coming on to MyHeritage. Uh, we'll have a webinar on August 23rd, and, and then we'll have um, another webinar on latest photo innovations on September 13th. So this is what we have coming up. You can see more uh, webinars by Uri in the webinar library. He's got nine other ones already there. Uh, and he, um, his most recent one, jumpstarting your 1950s census research with the census helper. Uh, but he's got all sorts of um, webinars on technology, all the new technology that has come to my heritage. So you can check those out. You can go to familytreewebinars.com uh, and put his name here, spelled like this, and then you will go directly there. Or you can go to our website and put in MyHeritage and you'll see everything by MyHeritage. And here we go, afilmatreewebinars.com forward slash MyHeritageWebinars and that will take you to everything uh, that we have in the library on MyHeritage. And so if you, have, if you have a DNA kit from MyHeritage or if you're using the photo tools or if you have subscription and you're doing research, um, these webinars are really going to help you a lot. All right, we have door prizes now. This is the fun part of the webinar when we get to give out a complete uh, plan to my heritage to one lucky audience member and I'll also be giving away a DNA kit. Uh, the my heritage complete plan it's made up of two components. The first component is the family site subscription and that gives you unlimited size capacity for building your family tree and then the other aspect of it is the data subscription and this gives you access to 16.9 billion historical records birth marriage death records census military immigration legal records newspapers i use my heritage a lot for newspaper research um, and but they have so much more than just that so with this prize you get a full complete plan and this is going to go out to Jean Markley. So congratulations, Jean. I will be contacting you about how to get uh, your prize. So be on the lookout for an email from me. And our next MyHeritage door prize is the MyHeritage DNA test kit. And when you get this, if you've already tested yourself, you can use the test kit to test somebody else in your family. It's okay to do that. Um, when you use the test kit, you get two sides to the DNA. You get all of your ethnicity information. And then you also get the matches who are going to tell you who your cousins are, your DNA cousins. Uh, and so the two uh, parts combined really give you a great deal of information about um, who you are and where you've come from. All right, let's see, who are we gonna give this one to? Somebody in our live audience right now. I'm gonna give that to William Rogers. So congratulations, William. We are gonna be sending a DNA test kit your way. And be sure to be on the lookout for that email from me because we do need to physically mail it to you. So um, be on the lookout for that. Okay, next let's bring Uri back on and we will over some of these questions. 
All right. Our first question today is from Stephen. He says, is it possible to tag a person that is not in your tree? Um, no, in order to tag a person, they need to exist in the family tree. The connection is always between a person that um, is in the tree and the photo. So you can add them to where they are in the family tree. If you want to tag people that are not in your family, you can add them to the family tree, but then disconnect them from, from the family tree, which is possible. So they're, they're just sitting there, but they're not, not really uh, related to anyone, if that's, if that's what you want to do. Okay, so you can add people, have like little islands in your tree. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. okay. And so just to clarify, the photos have to be on MyHeritage, in your account on MyHeritage, but the tagging is done from the mobile app as opposed to desktop. Currently, it's only available in the mobile app. We developed it first for the mobile app. Um, as I mentioned, in the next month or so, it will also be available. All of what I showed you will be available also on the website. So okay. through your desktop or through your phone if you're using the mobile web, so you're accessing it from the browser. But the photos don't have to come from your mobile phone. Your photos can already That's be uploaded, uploaded yeah. already to the website, right? Okay. Yes, you can upload them through the phone or through the app or through your desktop. So it doesn't matter as long as they're on my heritage. Okay. That, right. That's where the photo tagging actually happens. Okay. That's where the suggestions and the facial recognition happens. The okay. mobile app is only the place where right now you can do the work of um, confirming and rejecting those suggestions. And in the future, pretty soon, you can also do that on the web browser. Now, say uh, somebody uses the tagging feature from their phone and they say they have 100 photos and they get through and they, they tag 50 of the photos. And so then we have 50 that haven't been um, dispatched yet, so to speak. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after that three months, mm -hmm. Those will disappear, right? But the ones that have already been to the first 50 that actually got right. tagged, that will stay, right? Yes. So let's, let's kind of distinguish between two things. One, one we call the tags, which are we actually, you have, as the user has made a decision to say this is this person. And that's once you do that, it stays. We never remove it. The other thing is the tagging suggestions, which the photo tagger computed by itself for people that aren't yet tagged in a photo. And it says, we think that all of those faces are of this, of this person. It saves it for the photo tagger only. And you can, once you confirm it, it actually makes an actual tag. So if there's calculations and suggestions that were computed and you haven't decided to do anything with them, you haven't looked at them for three months, those calculations will be uh, removed. And if you go back to the application, to the photo tagger and say, yeah, I actually do want them, then we'll have to recalculate. And once they're recalculated, they are presented to you and you can accept them and that will actually tag them in the photo. All right, let me ask you another question about this. Say you have a thousand photos on MyHeritage is it possible to say, okay, my heritage, I want you to just look at these 200. I don't want you to, I'm not prepared to tag all 1,000 today, and I'm probably not going to do it in the next three months. Can, can you just say, I want this album to be looked at and tag those? Because, I mean, how long does it take for it to tag 1,000 images? Say you, you, you only get through 200 at a time. Is it going to have to do all of them every single time? So uh, tagging or, or looking at more photos or less photos is probably not a big difference. It's not that we want to save necessarily time for our calculations. Um, but I can see, and we have discussed this idea of looking at only a particular album and looking at just photos that are there. 
as you mentioned. It has advantages for different reasons because sometimes a specific album is of specific people, of a specific event. So you're kind of more concentrated on a specific part of the family and not get uh, distracted by other people that are not of your interest at this point. So yes, we are thinking of, as you mentioned, filtering it down by album and only looking at a subset. But it's more for usability reasons, less, less so for calculating, because we might have calculated all the suggestions, but just giving you part of them to okay. focus on. All right. Um, in the images you were showing, you know, there was a group of 14, a group of 12. Uh, along that line, Linda's asking, I'm assuming we can scroll up to look at each photo before clicking to confirm. We couldn't exactly see that in the image, you know, because it wasn't live. Right. So in the list of suggestions, um, once you look, go into a, a group and you can see, um, maybe I can share my screen again. Yeah, okay, hang on again. one sec. should see that alert now. Yep. Okay, so let's go back here. Could, yeah. Okay, so here we are looking at a particular group of faces that are the same person. If you click on the right on the photo, it will zoom in and show you that photo. So I clicked here on the third photo, this one here okay. at the bottom. But if you tap that, you will see the entire photo. And I can actually, there's going to be a checkbox here okay. as well. So you can uncheck it if you want. Uh, and then I can swipe right to get to the next photo in that group. And so I can go okay. individually on all those photos in that group of photos that we think of, of the same person and go over them one by one. Or through this list, you can just scroll down all the way to the end and look at them like this. So it's quicker. And you can, all right, so there's, there's 14 in this group. You can say, okay, yes, I identify 10 of these. And then you can say no or not answer for other ones, right? You can, you can choose either way. You don't really not say you, if you confirm, and by the way, this is an important point that I haven't really discussed. If there are a hundred uh, photos in, that we think are of Andrew William Smith, for example, we will actually only show you 25 because of this issue of there's too many photos here. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to really kind of overwhelm. We only show up to 25 of the best 25 and you can confirm those or maybe uncheck some. Once you uncheck some and say confirm, the algorithm now assumes that they, these ones that you unchecked are not that person. Mm -hmm. So it might later on suggest them as someone else. Mm -hmm. okay. It might later on suggest them as who is this person, tell us. But it will never say this is Andrew William Smith because you have told us it's not. Okay. That's a good distinction. So with, 20, yeah. Yeah. so with the 25, you confirm the 25, and then you will be given the next 25 to say, you can now work on more photos of this person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steven wants to know if you can uh, toggle the tags on and off once they have been tagged. Yeah, yeah if you check one here, but then you can always check it back or uncheck it. As long as you haven't confirmed, you can play with these check boxes as you please. If that's the question. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure actually um, if that was a question or if, um, if, if people were thinking that the little check boxes appeared when they're viewing them and that's why they wanna toggle it off. I'm not, oh, oh, that's it. It's actually the next screen, that's the, that's yeah, the, here, that's here. what he's talking about is the names. See how the names appear? So can you toggle that off and see the picture without the names? That's I think um, that's the question. I, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I think you will see the names uh, of the people that are already tagged. Mm -hmm. So 
that person that is suggested will be shown with a, a white a border. And the other people that are there that happen to already be in tag will appear with their names. So that helps you decide if the person in question is in fact the person that we're suggesting. But this is only, a, again, it's a temporary view that you're looking at a particular photo in that group to see, okay, I'm not sure here. Let me get some more information and zoom in, get all the information to make the decision. And if I think it isn't, this checkbox here that for some reason in this screenshot didn't appear, I can say no, and then go to the next. Okay. Yeah. All right. And along these lines, Anne wants to know, do these tags stay with the photos when they're downloaded? If you do a confirm and this tag is done, is actually encoded. And then when you go to the photo, you will see that this person is tagged. And if you go to the tree and everywhere, you will see that this, all these photos actually belong to this person. Until you do that, everywhere else in the, in the application or the website, those photos are still not related to this person. They're still kind of untagged. So, and then if you do tag and if you want to do something, anything that you want to do with your tree, view it, uh, do create reports, uh, export it to JEDCOM, then those tags will move along with this person. So, yeah. Oh, they will. Okay. So they're, they're yeah. kind of put into the XML or something like that to the meta tags. Yes. To the JEDCOM format of, yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Mm -hmm. That saves a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So Louise wants some clarification on how photos get in to the photo tagger. How, how do they, do they have to be scanned into MyHeritage? How are the, all the different ways to get photos into MyHeritage? Right. So the app here, if you go <clears throat> to the photo section, and you were here to begin with, um, there's always a plus button here to add new photos. So if you're working with the app, um, you can upload photos from the app to MyHeritage. Uh, you can take photos from your camera and upload them to MyHeritage. Uh, you can do that through your desktop. Any photos that you have that are of your family, um, you can upload to your family site, either through the app or through any other way, through Family Tree Builder if you're using that, which is our software for our Windows and Mac. So there's multiple ways that you can bring in photos to your MyHeritage family site. Once you have them and you click here on this photo tag or start and accept the terms and conditions, and then the photo tagger will take all the photos that you have already uploaded and what do we call scan them, but really it just uh, I, looks for faces, detects faces and groups them together into groups of faces that it thinks are of the same person. And as you upload new photos, through the app or through your desktop or through any other way, then those will be joined in and identified and regrouped in order to create new suggestions. I hope that answers the question. Yes, that's great. Thank you. All uh, right. Another um, point here from Stephen. Um, say he wants to print one of the photos from, say he's on the desktop. Uh, and, and his photos have been tagged. When he prints the photo, uh, will it show the tags or not? Um, I don't think we have a way to print a photo with the tag. You, the way you print it is basically you go to your site, you find this photo, there's a place to click on download, and then you basically have the image back on your computer and then from there you go and print it. And, and when uh, it's when it's back on your computer, the tags don't appear, right? When it's just the image on your computer, you have the tags yeah. in the meta, but it's not gonna appear on the actual image, yeah. right? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. You don't have, I don't think we have a print button that prints, unless you um, just go to the browser and click on the print button there, but I, okay. again, it won't show the tags. 
All right. So it will show who is tagged in the HTML page, but not where they are. Okay, Stephen, you'll have to let us know which way you're looking for. Are you trying to to print it with the tags or without the tags? It, of course, if you want it with the tags, you could. Uh, oh, he's saying with the tags. Okay, so what you can do is you can do a screen capture. Uh, yes. And yes, that would yes. be a great way to capture it. Um, Snagit's a great tool for yeah. that if you. Um... Yeah, so when we looked at this here, this is from the photo tagger, but you can get to this page also from your list of photos mm -hmm. after they were all tagged. And then you, and you see here all the people are mentioned where they are. And you just do a. Yeah, uh, screen capture and, and we can print it. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of a way of doing it. It would be really and the same thing you can do from the web, from the web uh, yeah. interface. Okay. Yeah, because that would be a great thing. You know, when people are sharing those group photos online, you know, with extended mm -hmm. family members and they have some people identify, but they don't have the others. And that would be such a great photo to that's share. Right. We could say, okay, we know who these people are now. Somebody please tell us who those people are and, and maybe at a family reunion or something like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. Uh, David um, wants to know if there's a limit to the number of photos ah. or the data size that can be uploaded to the iMac. He recently tried to upload more than 100 photos, and uh, it didn't work out too good. So, yeah, this is what I mentioned that photo tagger is free. Um, but in order to upload a certain amount of storage size that we allow a family site to have, at some point when you reach a limit, then you're asked to get a subscription. Um, so it really depends on the size of your photos, but um, if you want to use this feature to the max and upload a lot of photos, you'll at some point reach your quota and be asked to purchase a subscription on MyHeritage. Okay, so with the MyHeritage subscription, you can upload unlimited photos, right? If you have the complete subscription, yes. Yeah. And so say I upload 1,500 photos, and then mm -hmm. the next year I don't renew, but my photos are still in my heritage. Would I yes. be able to use the tagging tool for my 1,500 pictures that are already on my heritage? Yes, you will. Okay. Well, you won't be able to upload new photos, if that's the case, uh, but right. you could definitely run the photo tagger Okay. tag because that doesn't change the amount of storage okay. for your photos. All right. So what you do while you have a subscription, that's the most important part. Yes. Um, Bev wants to know if you have more than one tree that a person appears in, which tree will the tagging suggestions go to? Yes, this is something we do have as was mentioned here, that you can have a family site with photos, but multiple trees. Um, so you can have, for various reasons, people do that. I'm not going to get into why, but it's, mm -hmm. there's different reasons why people do this. Um, however, in MyHeritage, you as a member can only be linked to one individual in only one of those trees. So that tree is the one that we use in order to work with all your tagging suggestions. So if you have other trees you are not linked to, these trees are not participating in the photo tagging world. Okay. Of photo tag. Um, let's see. So Joan is asking this question, how many photos can you keep on your phone app? Now, we are talking about photos that are on MyHeritage. So I'm, does the, will the app show you all the photos that are, that you have on MyHeritage or is there a limit? No, there is no limit. Okay. When you upload a photo, even from the app to MyHeritage, it doesn't copy it on your phone. So the photos on your phone or the photos on your phone, it doesn't really change okay. your phone storage because okay. they are now on MyHeritage, the website. And when you open the app, it will bring them and you can scroll down, but it doesn't take up of 
any of your phone storage. Yeah. All right, let's see. We covered that question. Um, we covered that one. Um, let me see. So William wants to know, uh, how do you remove a tag that is wrong? So somebody tags somebody, so like you have William Smith here or Morris Smith, and, and then, uh-oh, turns out you got it wrong. How do you remove the tag? Uh, yes, you go into the photo page um, in the app or if you're on the website, and you see at some point, you know what, I'll just open the app here to make sure that I am the right thing so you can get to a photo in many different ways you can uh, just look at the, by albums or you can see them by people so you can look at all the photos of a certain person and if that is incorrect then you click on yeah so when you're in the photo hard to show here because I'm on the phone. Right. It'll show you all the people in the photo, just like we're kind of seeing here. And then if you, in this case of uh, Morris Smith, for example, if you click it, it'll show you a, a rectangle of where the face is. And at that point, you can move it, or resize it, but there's also an X that will appear next to their name. And if you click that X next to the name, it will remove this tag to confirm, are you sure you want to remove? And if you say yes, then it will remove that tag. So not on this page, because this is just a page for helping you tag another person. But if you just look at the, uh, the photo itself, not related to the photo tagger, then you will be able to manipulate all these tags. You can create new tags, you can modify existing tags, you can Delete All right, I think we've got just two more questions here. Um, Betty Ann uh, asked, what if a page is a collage of multiple photos of the same person? So it's like a, a picture that has multiple photos. Can each one be tagged? That's a good question. I remember that we uh, were dealing with that at some point. I'm trying to remember what the decision was because it does happen. You have collages, you have, uh, sometimes people actually scan or take a photo of an, an album page that has multiple photos in it. And they create like one photo which actually has multiple photos. And by the way, we have a solution for that coming up in the next uh, few weeks. Side note. Um, but in that case, um, I believe, first of all, the thing is in a photo on my heritage, a person could be tagged exactly once. You cannot actually tag a person more than once in a photo. So if oh, it's a collage okay. or if it's something yeah. like this, then you'll have to either break it up or tag only once. Okay. So, so that's the situation. So if we find that you have, let's say this is a situation that you tag the person, it's a collage, and you tag the person in one of them, and then the photo tagger finds another place where this person is, but it's not near that other position, then it will basically ignore it, I think, because it can't give you a second suggestion or and tag it twice. Okay. Uh, Lori is not seeing the photo tagging option on her phone. Just to clarify, you said currently it's on Android right now and it's coming soon to iPhone? It, it, we started rolling it out. You started it's rolling it out. So maybe yeah. she just doesn't have it on her phone yet. So uh, just yes. keep checking back. Probably by, by, by the beginning of next week it should be. We always, uh, technically what we do is we roll out in, we do a phased rollout see that there's no bugs and there's no technical issues before we go on and, and give it a, make it available for everyone and make an announcement. In this case, I'm doing this webinar a bit 
earlier than we usually do things, but since it's been out on Android for a while, then we're confident that the feature is. Do you is, have a, a specific, uh, a specific uh, version number um, that the app is available on so they can check the version number? Uh, let me check the one that I have here with me. So I'm going to settings about, and I have 6.2.5 for the iPhone. Six version, version 6.2.5. Okay. So there, I put that in the chat so you can, yeah. uh, and, and you guys can download the chat. If you go to your go to webinar control panel, do file, save chat, and that'll save that for you. Uh, so you don't have to try and remember that number or write it down really quickly. Okay. Here's our last, uh, question. And it's a great question. Um, from Annette, she says, what if you have multiple people in your tree with the same name? Yeah, that could happen, like father and son, and they mm -hmm. only are different by one is a junior and one is, or one is senior and so on. So when you, um, first of all, this could happen. And the best thing to do is if you can somehow disambiguate this by entering a suffix in, in case that is, if, if that's the case. Um, if you know when they were born and you have entered the birth date, um, when you um, see the information about this person, take this example that we saw here, Andrew William Smith. So when we make a suggestion, we also show you how you're related to them. So mostly it won't be at the same relationship between the two, Andrew William Smith, and their date of birth, and if they deceased a, a year of death, will be different. So this is how you can kind of tell them apart if okay. they have the same name. So as long as there's some other criteria, yeah. you, would, you would never probably put a person in without any information at all. But even so, it seems like the relationship, I mean, clearly yeah. there would be relationships yeah. there. So so it seems like there's a good amount of information yeah. to help you differentiate it. I mean, it's yeah. hard keeping these people straight, <laughs> even when you do have yeah. information about them, but um, that's If you have two cousins with exactly the same name, they're both shown as cousins and they were born in the same year. Yeah. Then tough luck. But that's genealogy, so that we just all have to yeah. live with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Uri, this has been great, um, really helpful, and a, a really nice feature that um, my heritage has added. So thank you so much for uh, coming on today and uh, sharing this information with us. My pleasure. It's one of the most, um, I love this feature. It's, uh, it's very helpful. It's, uh, it makes life so much easier and I think people will love it. It's something that it's not one of, sometimes we do things that are, you know, fun, like the deep nostalgia that we did, which are like, you know, uh, showy and fun and, but this one actually has a lot of value, real value for organizing the photos, for you know, making your family tree richer. And that's why it's uh, a feature that I love to work on. Yeah, it's, it, it's very practical and time-saving. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks, everyone, for being here today. We look forward to seeing you at the next MyHeritage Series webinar. Bye, everyone.